Hello friends and welcome to another episode of Team Jesus Outdoors. Hey guys, I just want to bring you a real quick follow-up video to the video that I recently did about my order from Timu. Some of you guys will remember that a couple months ago I brought to you a short video about an order I made at Timu. Well hey guys, after that first order the majority of products that I ordered in that first order, I gotta say I was actually pretty happy with. Um, again, there's some things that I certainly would not order from Timu, but there were a number of products that I felt like it was worth taking a gamble on, and I was, I was actually pretty pleased with the quality of products that I, that I got in that order. So guys, in order to try to decide what do I really think about this Timu, do I recommend it or not, I've decided to give them another try and I'm, I've placed a second order. I'll tell you guys, for the most part, I'm pretty happy again with what I've got. I still say you've got to use a little bit of judgment about what type of products you order from Timu. And, and I'll show you an example of that uh, in this short video. So there are some products that I would order from Timu and there are some products that I would not order from Timu. But guys, here is a great example. Like many of you guys, I've, I've sort of gotten into the habit of wearing sun gloves much of the time. I, I don't do a perfect job to wear them every time I'm out for sure, uh, but I have learned to I have kind of gotten into the habit of wearing these sun gloves a lot of the time I'm on the water, especially when there's a, especially when the UV measurement is really high. If you guys have ordered sun gloves from any of the major brand names out there, or even if you've ordered a pair of sun gloves from uh, Bass Pro Shops, but you know that these these sun gloves are not cheap. You can pay 25, 30 bucks for a pair of sun gloves. So when I saw these sun gloves on Timu for, I don't remember what it was, five, six, seven dollars, it was just a few dollars. I thought, what the heck, I'm definitely gonna give that a try. If nothing else, they'll become a backup pair that I leave in the boat. But guys, I'm pretty happy with these. Uh, this particular pair has an open palm. Uh, it's got some, it's got the leather grip on two of the fingers and in the insert right here so guys these work very very well for these actually work very very well for gripping your rod and reel uh, when you're palming your bass reel just a well designed pair of sun gloves at a bargain price and I've got some big old paws, and the extra large pair fits me just fine. You know, we'll see how long these last. Um, I would not expect these to last as long as a pair of gloves from AFCO or a pair of gloves from Fish Monkey. But we'll see if these things hold up maybe as long as a pair of uh, my other, my primary pair of sun gloves, which are. Uh, Bass Pro Shops brand. Another product I picked up was these. This is a just a little just a little minnow imitating soft plastic that I thought would make a great little drop shot bait. We'll see. I haven't used them yet, but they were super cheap. I think there's ten in a pack here for a couple dollars. My gut says they'll probably catch fish, but we'll find out. I use a ton of cross-lock snaps. I particularly use a lot of these when I'm walleye fishing. And I've never got enough of these in the boat. Uh, I try to keep some in the garage, I try to keep some in the boat. But it never fails. I'm always looking for a cross-lock snap. Now, unlike a swivel where you might question the quality of a ball bearing, this is literally just a cross lock snap. Now 
They feel pretty good to me. I'm not exactly sure what to expect, but I feel like the strength is there. Like I said, I'm primarily using them for walleye, so we're not talking about 30 pound salmon or or a hard charging smallmouth. So my gut says these are gonna work just fine for what I need them for. And I got them super cheap. If you saw my last video, you'll probably remember that a big part of my order in that first order was braided fishing line. I was pretty happy with the feel of the Eagle Power braided line, so I've ordered another spool. Um, my intention is to use this for my Dipsy Diver rods. This is a this is a 500 yard spool of 50 pound test braid, and I got it for less than 10 bucks. I don't remember what it was, but it was. It was under ten dollars so again dirt cheap it's 50 pound test I guess we'll you know time will tell does it hold up or not but my gut says it's pretty decent stuff guys we never have enough needle nose pliers I try to keep multiple players on the boat. I've usually got two or three pair of needle nose on the boat. I've always got a pair in my travel bag. Or if I'm doing a little bit of bank fishing, I try to grab a pair. So I'm just always reaching for a pair of needle nose players. In my opinion, you really can't have too many. Um, the average guy with a boat who does some fishing with other people you probably need somewhere between a half a dozen pair a dozen pair and these are spring these are a spring assisted plier I don't know they're they're not super heavy duty but I my gut tells me that this is a pair of pliers that will actually hold up fairly well so for the few bucks I gave for these pliers with the sheath in the lanyard I feel like I got my money's worth out of these players here's another pack of soft plastics that caught my eye this is another small minnow imitating plastic this one molded on a little lead head jig this is a translucent plastic a little bit of glitter in it just a fantastic little jig uh, I'll find out when I get on the water but my thought is is maybe it would make a good uh, Demiki style bait but if nothing else uh, this would probably make a pretty decent little crappie jig so there's actually a there's actually a decent size weight in there I don't remember what the weight was but I'm sure I will find a use for this little soft plastic with the molded in jig head. And again, the same with all these other products. These were only a few bucks, super cheap. How can you go wrong? All right, the last two items of terminal tackle. I bought a pack of... Uh, Just like the cross lock snaps I'm always looking for a snap swivel uh, I do a lot of my rigging in my garage so I'm always digging or digging around somewhere in the garage trying to find us just a regular old cross lock snap swivel this is a real common size it's not tiny um, just a kind of a medium size cross lock snap swivel They're not ball bearings, it's just a regular barrel swivel. But again, I picked these up dirt cheap, a couple of dollars. I'm sure they'll be fine for walleye. Until I have one bend out on me or break somewhere, I will not be afraid to try these when I'm fishing for walleye. This is also a size that I, that I typically use on my perch rigs. And without question, they would be fine on a perch rig. 
I don't remember if this is a 50 pack or a 100 pack. It looks, I believe this was a 100 pack. For a couple bucks, this is money well spent. Even if I only wind up ever using them for perch. And the last piece of terminal tackle. Guys, for years, I have been using a version of this. This is a drop shot hook. This is a drop shot hook that acts as a swivel to reduce line twists when you're fishing a drop shot. Now I've fished several versions of this hook. I've used a Gamagatsu version. I've used a Mustad version. Um, my favorite is the owner version. But I love these things. This is a knockoff Chinese version, so I guess we'll find out how they hold up. Um, I really don't fish tournaments anymore, so most of my smallmouth fishing now is for fun. So we'll see how this light wire hook holds up. We'll see how well it reduces line twist. We're definitely going to give this a shot for a few dollars. All right, so so here is what I would say is here is what I would say is a great example of what you have to beware of when it comes to ordering at Timu, especially if you're the kind of guy that order that makes an order from your phone. But even if you're using your desktop. You've just got to be a little bit careful about the dimensions of certain products. I've noticed that some products, the, the photo on the website is a little bit misleading at times. So I, I've, I've seen um, crankbaits, like hard baits, that the photograph looks like it's a standard size crankbait, but then if you look at the measurements, it's a tiny little micro size crankbait so you kind of got to watch out for that kind of thing on Timu and here's a great example this is a folding collapsible net that I picked up in this last order and that's my net Made in China, you don't say. So I was obviously a little bit disappointed with this thing. I'm kind of wondering if maybe there's not potentially a usefulness for this in, I don't know, trying to dig perch out of the live well. Um, I don't know, we'll throw it in the boat and we'll see if I can find a usefulness for it. But I want to say this was between five and ten dollars. So if it turns out it's complete garbage and I throw it in the trash, you know, I guess I won't cry too much over spilt milk. But here's an example of you got to be a little bit careful on Timu. You got to really read that description sometimes. You got to really look at the measurements sometimes. This one, this this one, I obviously didn't look close enough. I thought a collapsible folding net sounded cool. I jumped before I read the uh, dimensions in the description. Let the buyer beware, right? So, guys, I guess the bottom line is this: there are some bargains to be had at Timu, but look their fishing products over real close. Pay close attention to what you're ordering, size, quantity, uh, dimensions, that sort of thing. Pay close attention to what you're ordering and you can find some real bargains at Timu. I, I, still, I still insist I would never buy a rod or a reel from Timu. I'd be pretty reluctant to buy a just a regular old hard body crankbait.
but there are I've definitely picked up some bargains for t from Timu. I've been pretty happy with the soft plastics I've got. I've been pretty happy with the terminal tackle. Uh, we'll see how these hooks hold their sharpness. We'll see how these hooks hold up on smallmouth. But if these hooks hold up well, then I have to say most of the terminal tackle I've picked up, I'm really, really happy with. So guys, I think Timu is worth taking a look at. Uh, I'll leave a link down in the description box below to the Timu website. Uh, I think I've even, I might even have a discount link. If I do, I'll include that in the, in the description as well. But guys, take a look at Timu. Let the buyer beware. Use good judgment. And good luck finding some really good deals, guys, because there's some on there. Guys, please make sure to go over and check out our other YouTube channel, TJO Men's Ministries. Uh, at that channel, we talk a lot about, we talk more about faith than we do the outdoors. Uh, but for those of you that are interested in the things of God, either you're exploring the idea of faith in Christ or you're trying to grow in your faith in Christ, I think there's some content over that you, a lot of you guys might be interested in. So please follow this link here at the end of the video and check out TJO Men's Ministries. So hey guys, thanks for watching another episode of Team Jesus Outdoors. God bless, tight lines. We'll see you guys on the water.